This is a Figma prototype using string variables. In this video, we'll walk through how to create string variables and use them for prototyping menu options for this kiosk. String variables let you store text to use throughout your design in a scalable way. And you can use them for instance variables to unlock some tasty prototyping features. Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. This is video three of a four part series covering variables and prototypes. You can find a link to the last video at the end of this video. Subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to follow along. We're picking up where we left off last time again, so our file already has some things set up. I've added some text to the large card that will give people a way to customize their sandwich. We'll turn it off for this main component. Next, we'll create a new component from our original card by making a copy and pressing the shortcut Option Command K to turn it into a component. The original component instance is nested inside of this one now, so we'll still get access to the properties from that card. Let's rename the new one to Roast Beef Card. Now let's create some variants. With the new beef card selected, head up to the top of the screen and press this little plus icon. Now we'll update the variant property. Move over to the right panel and double click on property one and rename it Option. Now select our first variant and change its value to Original. Select the second one and name it Extra. This will represent the extra meat option. I'm going to create two more variants real quick one named Monster, and the other named Spicy. Our customers will now have four ways to customize the roast beef sandwich. Let's turn on the Customize option by clicking into our nested component and toggling the property we had already set up. We also need to redo the title so it says Roast Beef Sandwich. Select the first text node, move up to the top of the center bar and click the new multi-edit icon or press the shortcut Q. Now you can change the text in all of them at once. I'll quickly add the images. Next, we need to replace our existing beef menu item with this new one. To make sure we don't lose the interactions we've made in the earlier videos, let's duplicate the beef card by selecting it and pressing Command D. With the new one selected, move over to the Instant Swap menu and select the new card. Let's make sure the price is attached to our beef price variable. Now select the old beef card and switch into prototype mode in the upper right corner. We can actually copy and paste interactions now. Select the interaction in the upper right, press Command C. Now select our new card and press Command V. Now this card has all the same interactions. Let's delete the old one now. I have this popover menu already designed that consists of an auto layout frame with four menu items in it. Each menu item represents the customization options we set up earlier. Now open up the variable dialog. We'll create a new string variable and name it roast beef. Enter a value of original to match the first variant name. Select the original menu item and move over to the interaction menu on the right. Click to create a new interaction. Choose set variable from the list of options. Select the roast beef string variable, then type in the value of original. Now we'll do the next one for extra meat. It's important that the values we enter for these variables match the values of the option properties we set up in the cards. Set this second one to extra now the third will be Monster, and the last will be Spicy. Copy this menu and paste instances inside of each of our four beef variants. Next, we'll need to set up a Boolean variable to control the visibility of this menu. I've already set that up here. Let's assign this variable to our menus by right-clicking on the eyeball icon and selecting the Boolean variable. They'll hide since our Boolean is set to false. In prototype mode, select each of our customized buttons and add a new interaction to toggle our menu boolean on click. Now we need to set our kiosk menu beef card instance to use this new variable. Back in design mode, select that beef card. Head over to the instance swap menu and click the variable icon to the right. Choose our roast beef variable from the list. You'll notice that the value is now a chip to denote a variable. It's finally time to see this in action. Select our kiosk frame and press shift spacebar to preview the prototype. We can click the Customize button, open the menu. Oops. We need to set up a conditional and change our auto layout so that the first is on top instead of the last. Head back to our kiosk menu, select the auto layout frame that holds all of our menu items, move over to the auto layout panel, click the overflow menu, and change our canvas stacking to first on top. Over in our Customize button, open the interaction and change it from set variable to conditional. Now we can set up a test to see if the boolean is true or false. If our variable is set to false, we'll make it true or else we'll make it false. 
This lets us toggle the menu options. Preview this again and select our sandwich option. I like a good spicy sandwich. You'll see that our variant changes based on which menu item we select. Perfect. Well, almost. If we add the sandwich to the order, the small card doesn't reflect the change. Let's fix that. We'll need to do the same thing we did with the large card. Make a nested component out of the main one, create four variants with the same names and images as the large one. Like we did with the large card, we need to replace the small card in our order panel. Open the variables dialog and toggle on the small beef card. Now duplicate that card and swap the instance to our new card. Let's also toggle the quantity UI in the properties. You'll need to select the main component instance to do that. Now let's quickly copy all of these interactions over and apply the variables for quantity and price. Now delete the old one and apply our roast beef variable to the instance of this small card. Toggle the boolean for it back to false. Let's preview this to make sure everything cooked up okay. Click the play button in the upper right corner. We can choose which sandwich we'd like and then click the card to add it to our order. Pretty slick. That's how you use string variables and prototypes. Do you want to see a video showing you how to make a working text input using string variables? Leave a comment to let me know so I can work it into the schedule. I hope this Figma Byte helps you string together sophisticated prototypes. Thanks for watching.